resonator produces a very weak magnetic field because electrical currents, um, extremely weak, are moving through the coils on each side. And then there's um, a very uniform magnetic field created in between the coils. And the subject is immersed in that magnetic field. And magnetic fields pass through everything in the body, including cell membranes. The difference between a magnetic field and an electric field is that electric fields uh, beyond 1,000 hertz are attenuated by cell membranes, but magnetic fields go right through. So, when you have a magnetic profile of tissues that changes based upon disease or injury, the necessity uh, becomes relevant in that you need to reorganize, renormalize the magnetic profile of the tissue to send it back to normal. When the magnetic profile of the tissue is sent back to normal, then the atoms, the constituents, the molecular species of the tissues begin to talk to one another properly and <clears throat> move in relative translational motion with respect to one another. They cooperate better. They become coherent. And from a, a group action point of view, they function more appropriately in order to either restore or maintain homeostatic function, which is based in normal electrophysiological states. So very simply, the uh, coils produce a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is a normal magnetic field, normal to tissue, which is millions of times weaker than the Earth's steady magnetic field. These magnetic fields have been measured at major universities using sophisticated instrumentation. And these magnetic fields are in the picotesla range generally. They can be a little bit stronger, and they also can be much weaker, as a matter of fact. The interesting thing about these magnetic fields is that from a standpoint of resonance, they tune in to subatomic, atomic, and molecular species so that they regulate the motions of the critical molecules and the critical atoms that comprise tissues. And by utilizing, um, normalizing magnetic profiles for the brain, we improve the cooperativity of different systems and the different parts of the brain can now talk to one another more appropriately. Uh, by using the appropriate magnetic signals for the heart, the heart can calm down improve in parasympathetic function and uh, the rhythmicity of the system, circadian rhythmicity, would be better controlled uh, with low-level parasympathetic stimulation, which has been found, incidentally, at the University of Oklahoma to be uh, critically important, as well in the potential amelioration of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Also, at Cornell Medical School, what we found was that very low-level magnetic fields in mice could be utilized to restore the um, nerve ultrastructure of peripheral nerves, including all the relevant features, uh, mitochondria, Schwann cells, Golgi bodies, uh, myelin sheath, neurofilaments, microtubules, etc to actually regenerate these critical structures and restore function. And studies have been done, and th these data have been published as well. There are a number of different studies that these magnetic fields have been utilized for, including wound healing studies at Mississippi State University in rats. Um, it was shown that picotesla range magnetic fields can speed the wound healing in sutured and non-sutured wounds. Uh, additionally, uh, we did further studies at Mississippi State University in breast cancer cells, human breast cancer cells, and we found that 
we could uh, at least minimize the proliferation of human breast cancer cells in vitro utilizing picotesla range magnetic fields. So a number of different conditions, a number of different indications ha have been demonstrated to be efficacious um, as, a, as a byproduct of utilizing normalizing magnetic fields. And the interesting thing is that we have a holistic, non-invasive, um, safe modality given non-significant risk by FDA, as well as a 513G by FDA, which means that um, we can enhance feelings of relaxation. Enhancing feelings of relaxation is critically important because it affects the limbic system of the brain. It affects uh, such structures as the, as the hippocampus, which regulates short-term memory. Uh, it affects uh, the amygdala, which uh, is related to uh, control of anxiety and depression as well. It affects the locus ceruleus in an anti-adrenergic effect because it reduces uh, sympathetic function and enhances parasympathetic function. It uh, renormalizes circadian rhythmicity controlled by the raphe nuclei in the, uh, in the brainstem as well. So a number of different um, products of magnetic stimulation have been produced. Um, and most especially, uh, the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, is very well regulated by low-level picotesla range magnetic fields in the sense that we can reduce the production of the stress hormone cortisol. When we reduce stress and we reduce anxiety and we enhance relaxation, what we do uh, is actually a, uh, an anti-aging function. And with this anti-aging function, we can uh, predict, according to the basic equation of Jacobson resonance, that telomere shortening will be diminished. And, uh, we can also affect telomerase enzyme inhibition, which is uh, based in current scientific research in, in, in the area of cancer. So there are a number of things that we could do that are um, monumentally beneficial to not only restore wellness, but maintain wellness and prevent aging because aging there is nothing that enhances aging more quickly than stress. And when, when you enhance feelings of relaxation, that is the most critically important factor in stress reduction. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you for that. And that's you.